What can we expect from the rest of Season 1 of House of the Dragon? Let's break down the Weeks Ahead trailer and see what we can see. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we cover House of the Dragon in full, breakdowns, explanations and deep dives into the lore and history of George R. R. Martin's world, as well as other great fantasy books and TV shows. If that sounds good, then please consider clicking the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen and the bell icon. Episode 1 of House of the Dragon left us in a dramatic moment. Viserys's wife Emma and newborn child tragically dead, Rhaenyra announced as the heir to the Iron Throne, Daemon Targaryen banished, and the big reveal of the prophecy, the Song of Ice and Fire, that lies behind the Targaryen's determination to rule Westeros. Before we get any further, I should say that although there won't be any show spoilers per se beyond what we see in the trailers, I will be making links across to what we know happens in the book, so if you haven't read Fire and Blood and you're wanting to go into this season completely fresh, this may not be the video for you. Let's start with Damon. Episode 2 is titled The Rogue Prince, so it appears that he will be the focus of that episode. For those who are unaware, part of the story we have in Fire and Blood was previously published as a couple of novellas George R. R. Martin wrote around this period. One of them, The Rogue Prince, was primarily about Damon Targaryen. At the end of episode one, Damon was cast out of court for making that toast to the heir for a day. Viserys was understandably still very raw about the death of his wife and newborn son. Damon had been instructed to return to his wife in Runestone in the Vale, but we see him instead flying off on Caraxes with Myseria, his lover. What we know from the books is that Myceria becomes pregnant and Damon decides that he wants a dragon egg for the baby. The implication is clear that he wants his bastard child to be a dragon rider. We've seen plenty of images in previous trailers of this attempt to take a dragon egg happening, but he gets stopped by none other than Otto Hightower. It looks like there's a bit of a standoff, but wait a minute, here's Rhaenyra on Cyrax coming to land behind Otto. Is she siding with him? All of this panned out a little differently in the books. It was Damon's stealing of a dragon egg for his bastard child that led to his banishment, rather than the heir for a day thing, but the end result is the same. After this, Damon is out of favour, angry and in need of letting off steam. Which he does, by teaming up with Corlys Velaryon for a war in the Stepstones against the Triarchy. This issue got a mention in episode one. Corlys raised it at a small council meeting. Three of the free cities had come together to form an alliance called the Triarchy. They then set to invading the Stepstones, that chain of rocks and small islands between Dawn at the south of Westeros and the disputed lands in Essos. This concerned Corlys because the Velaryons were a great seafaring house, and this threatened their control over the Narrow Sea, as well as affecting trade. Something had to be done. The two of them, Damon and Corlys, in the book then set out to claim the Stepstones themselves, taking on a commander called Kragas Dreha, or Crabfeeder, for the rather gruesome way he staked out his defeated enemies on the shore for crabs to eat. All in all, it looks like the show is following the book pretty closely here. The two of them lead the battle, with Caraxes obviously being a very important factor. Just one dragon can tip the balance in most battles. The trailer doesn't go much further in this storyline, although in the book they are largely victorious. Damon takes on the title King of the Stepstones and the Narrow Sea, and eventually gets back into favour with Viserys by returning to court and laying his new crown before the king. Perhaps that's what's happening here. While all that is going on, though, things are still moving ahead in King's Landing. Rhaenyra, now heir, obviously starts attracting a lot of attention as she heads towards the age where she might marry. She's the most eligible woman in the Seven Kingdoms by a long way. Kristen Cole, who we saw fighting in the tourney and beating Daemon in episode one, becomes a White Cloak, a member of the Kingsguard. In the book, he and Rhaenyra get close and he becomes her personal guard until, well, we'll have to wait and see what they do with that situation later in the season. But Rhaenyra does need to be married, or at least Viserys will want her to marry, to continue the ruling line, and we've had plenty of shots of what looks like the wedding feast for her wedding to Laenor Velaryon, Corlys and Rhaenys' son. 
In the books, and surely on the show too, this is not straightforward though, as Lenor is gay, so they will have to come to some sort of understanding about how all that is going to work. Perhaps that's what's going on with these shots of them walking along the beach. And Rhaenyra, as heir, it seems, is getting taught more about that prophecy or dream of Aegon the Conqueror that we learned about at the end of episode one. Aegon the Conqueror having this dream isn't in any of the books yet, so we'll have to see what they do with it here, although the concept of it being in the show did apparently come from George R. R. Martin himself, and he has since talked about it a bit more. If you want more about what he has said and what it means for the Winds of Winter and beyond, I'm doing a video on that tomorrow. Make sure you have your notifications switched on, that's the little bell icon, if you want to be sure not to miss it. But in the show, it seems that the prophecy is written on the dagger that Viserys carries around with him, that will much later become the cat's paw dagger we saw in Game of Thrones. The voiceover for the opening part of the trailer is Rhaenyra reading aloud. From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. Intriguing. Another thing which happened in episode one that will have far-reaching implications for episode two and beyond is Otto sending his daughter Alicent to comfort the king after the loss of his wife and child. This clearly wasn't just an innocent moment of wanting to comfort a friend. Otto suggests she dress in her mother's dress, so like a woman rather than a girl. And well, if his hope was that the king might find comfort with her in more ways than one, then in the book, and surely in the show, it works. She becomes queen, which opens up the possibility of rival claimants to the throne. Sure enough, we also hear Otto muttering that the realm will not accept Rhaenyra as queen, and Rhaenys telling Rhaenyra that the realm will never accept a woman on the Iron Throne. The growing conflict is clear. At which point, it's probably just worth reminding you that there will be several time jumps in this season. It's a full 28 years from the Great Council that opened Season 1 to the outbreak of war, which is where this season will surely finish. So some of the younger actors will age up to older actors. During this time, we will see the disintegration of the friendship between Alicent and Rhaenyra, most dramatically here when Alicent rushes at Rhaenyra with a knife, that dagger again. It's the moment at which the two sides become pretty irrevocably opposed to each other. What else do we see? Well, we haven't seen much of the Strongs yet, although they are an important part of this story. Here's a shot of Harrenhal, their home, and Lord Lionel Strong looking pensive. Here's Viserys, angry again at Daemon. We don't really have any context for this, but in the book, after Daemon returns to court, well, there are conflicting reports of exactly what happens, but he seems to get too close to his niece Rhaenyra for Viserys' liking. Much too close. Viserys calling him a plague certainly seems to fit this. Needless to say, in the book he gets banished again. The rogue prince indeed. We see him later in this trailer, as in other trailers, seemingly engaging in a blood ritual hand fasting with Rhaenyra, though, in fitting with the very Valyrian traditionalist he appears to be. Expect a lot of the last part of this season to be pictures of the two of them staring meaningfully across the gullet towards King's Landing, while Team Green, the High Towers, are up to nefarious things. Talking of which, Yes, that is Kristen Cole standing by Alicent, not Rhaenyra. What caused him to change sides is a cause of much debate in the books, so it will be fascinating to see how they handle that here. The last shot we have in that trailer is of what looks like Vagar, the oldest and fiercest of the dragons, the only one to survive from the time of Aegon the Conqueror. At the start of the show, Vagar hasn't had a rider since Balon, Viserys and Daemon's father, died. Who gets to bond with this most powerful of dragons is going to be crucial. The tensions between members of the wider Targaryen family will start to become apparent over the next few episodes, but things will only start to get real when the dragons themselves get involved. What are you most looking forward to, though, in this season of House of the Dragon? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos in the world of Ice and Fire, particularly House of the Dragon, please click on the link to the playlist on the left of your screen. Or if you'd like to support this channel, or get access to some content I produce just for my patrons, please click on the link to my Patreon page on the right of the screen. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.